This is Ross Shabilsky of D20 Studios, and this demonstration we're going to showcase the OR multi screen components in the context of an actual game. This demonstration will show how these components adapt depending upon the target deployment form. So, to begin with, we're going to go ahead and just publish this game for the web target Flash Player 11.2. Hit OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and publish this game. So here my game's loading up. And I'm going to go to multiplayer. Log in. And now we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, first off, actually, these are the components here on the side panel. This is the user list component. Um, this is using just a basic list uh, multi-screen for Aura with a custom cell rendered out to output my game portrait, uh, name, and stats. If I go to create a game, we can see here is another Aura multi-screen component. This is the touch box. So I can open this up, scroll and select using the mouse, since I'm in the web browser, uh, the number of max players, max spectators. We'll give this a game name, uh, game. And now we're going to see a few more instances of these components. So if I click on my game options here, uh, this is the color component. So I can actually go ahead and pick a color. I can select um, this other drop down here to decide some options, make spectator, game host. And then in here, we have uh, the multi-screen component applied with actual game characters. So in this case, we've populated it rather than with uh, basic cell render data be populated with actual illustrations of different characters and I can use my scroll bar to scrub across and this is leveraging the same benefits of the recycling list so it's not keeping these all on display list at the same time it's very neatly cleaning them up and uh, removing them from display list when they're not being used all right and you know maybe I'll pick a sorceress minotaur scientist. except and now you can see all my colors and all my options are there so some pretty cool uses of these components and why these would be useful for a game application. Um, now we're going to go ahead and close this down. And we're going to publish the exact same file, but this time we're going to publish it and target Air 3.2 for Android. And just to make sure everything looks good, we're going to make sure it's full screen, GPU. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and once again publish this game application. All right, so again, the exact same source code used. All we did was change the publication type for mobile devices. And now let's see how this looks in multiplayer. I'm going to go ahead to log in again because it's a different uh, domain. Log in. All right, so again, here's my multi-user list all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and create a new game. The uh, Dropbox, notice how there's no longer a mouse scroll bar since I would technically be on a touch device. I would use my finger to scroll like so. And now from inside here, if I select my, say, options, my color picker, this will look the same because we never actually accessed or needed the scroll bar, but I can pick that. My options here works just like before, touch. Um, then what's really cool, go to my heroes, and now these guys can be dragged along using a touch control. So I can actually slide them along, let them all go fly in there. And again, performance will be choppy here just because my computer is both trying to render um, output trace statements and also capture uh, the movie on the screen here. But this will actually run very smooth on an actual deployed device. You get the nice, clean 60 frames per second with this. And I can pick my heroes again and hit OK. So what's the benefit to this? Uh, these components are enabling us to design an interface layout one time that's customized particularly to meet the look and feel of the game interface. I can deploy this game to the web, to Android, to iOS, and the controls and components will adapt to the platform the user is playing the game on. 
This saves a lot of time with having to make uh, custom native extensions that might have to utilize iOS's proprietary scroll method or the custom scroll method for Android or having to plug in a custom UI for the browser. All of these things, as you can see with how closely they're tied into this game option screen mechanic, would be very difficult. Um, we'd have to literally code an entirely unique interface for each one of those platforms had we been using native components or using a um, browser-only version of the component with the mouse scroll. These multi-screen components allow you to build an interface one time and have it adapt across all platforms. So very handy to have. Thanks for checking this out and be sure to download the sample demos I have available here, try it out, and let me know what you guys think of this and whether this would be something that you would find useful in your game development workflow.